Is this still an act of self-defence? What happens next? Let's explore that first with Dr Einat Wilf, who's a former member of the Israeli's parliament, also served as an intelligence officer in the IDF, and co-wrote The War of Return, joins me now. Thank you for coming on. Doctor, is this still an act of self-defence? Good morning. Of course, it's actually finally an act of self-defence. Israel, from its first days, because it's a very, very small territory and surrounded by enemies that are 10 times or 50 times its number, always defended itself and was most effective defending itself by, by going on the offense. In fact, the problem we had for quite a few years now is we've adopted a posture of just kind of uh, Iron Dome, essentially letting our enemies build on our borders, unhindered, and we're finally doing what we did when we were a nation who, that really knew how to defend itself, which is always take the war to the enemy's territory, always defend ourselves by going on the offense, and we're finally doing it. And in the face of opposition from presidents, prime ministers, the United Nations and everyone else, how much does that unsettle you? Uh, by now we have a long history of this, at least a century. Your country knows that as well. Whenever the Arabs are winning and slaughtering Jews, the tendency of great powers is to cave into their demands. Whenever the Jewish Yishuv or the state of Israel is fighting back, the immediate hysterical call is for a ceasefire. But as Britain knows from its war against the Nazis, actual proper wars need to end in the defeat of an enemy, especially an enemy that has an, an annihilationist ideology, nothing less. I hope that our government will really see this through because how this is how you properly defend your country. But if we're hearing language such as limited, localized and targeted, to pick up on your point, Doctor, how does that mean they'll see it through, to use your words? Oh, these are the means which you described. Seeing it through is ultimately the enemy needs to quote the name of a book about imperial Japan, embrace defeat. The tragedy of the region for a century is that the Arabs have never been allowed to embrace defeat and to actually move forward with their lives as the Japanese have, as Germany has. They've always been allowed to kind of uh, have no consequences. They would attack Israel and then there would be no consequences for their actions just as they were beginning to lose. I hope this dynamic will be stopped this time. I am quite pleased that Israel is kind of regaining a bit of its, shall we say, rogue nation status. We cannot afford to tie our defense uh, possibilities to what? the U.S. The U.S. is separated from the world by two oceans. Uh, we cannot have the same defend posture as a superpower like the United States. Why would you celebrate being a rogue state? Doesn't that put you akin to North Korea and other countries? Oh, no. I mean rogue in the sense that we actually pursue words? our own self-defense rather than listening to countries who have forgot what it's like to actually win wars. Lastly, I sense we know what success looks like as regards Hezbollah, it is the Litani River. What does success look like in Gaza to you, Doctor? Oh, uh, success in Lebanon is much more than that. Success is finally Lebanon assuming its position as a sovereign state, making peace with Israel. We have no territorial dispute with Lebanon. That's what actual success looks like. And the same with the Palestinians. The day that the Palestinians will forgo their century-long war against Jewish sovereignty, the day they develop an ideology of living next to the Jewish state rather than instead of it, the day they finally forgo ideas like return, then the days will have peace side by side. And that's that the days the shelling of Gaza will stop, is it, lastly, Doctor? Uh, the shelling is part of a war. The war ends when the Palestinians end their century-long war against the existence of a Jewish state in any borders. I'm grateful for your time. Dr. Einat Wilf is a former member of the Israeli parliament, also served as an intelligence officer in the IDF. Listening to that is Anthony King, who's professor of war studies at the University of Exeter. Uh, this is very much uh, your meat and drink, sir. What would give you most cause con for concern over the next 24, 48 hours? Good morning. 
Um, well, thanks and, and good morning. Um, well, it was a very interesting uh, statement that's just been made. I, I mean, I think it's probably worth uh, focusing on the issues uh, in the north and Lebanon. I mean, that's the key bit of news. Um, and I think the, bit, the concerns here, which are articulated by David Lammy, by President Biden, is um, escalation. I mean, the issue is, is for me, is, um, is that question of escalation. It's not really whether... I, I think this could, this action could be certainly justified militarily and probably, I think, almost certainly justified legally as a, as a defensive measure. I mean, the key question I interpret coming out of the White House is the issue of escalation. Um, is this going to generate a reaction from Iran and also from the Houthis uh, as well and also from Hezbollah? Uh, will that intensify a situation which, frankly, although people say we're moving to war, I mean, really, this region has been at some level of war since the 7th of October. Um, so the question is, is escalation. And the second question related to that is, are the Israelis actually going to achieve their objectives? They've not really achieved their objectives in Gaza. And of course, in 2006, they utterly failed to clear the Litani River up to the Litani River. So th those would be my concerns coming out of the previous state. What do you anticipate the reaction will be from Iran? Well, Iran will be rhetorically furious without question. But actually, and despite President Biden's concerns, which are reasonable, um, what's been very interesting over the last eight, 10 months is Iran's actual impotence in terms of their retaliation. Yes, they sponsored Hezbollah to fire loads of rockets, uh, you know, 8,000, 9,000 rockets into Israel. The Houthis have also acted uh, very significantly. But it, Iran's own attacks, the, the air attack, the, the multiple hundred drone, multiple hundred drone uh, attacks in April and July, um, they didn't work at all. The Iron Dome defeated them. There was no reaction to Ismail Haniyeh's assassination in July either from Iran, despite the fact they said there would. So actually... Um, and this is obviously the Netanyahu government is thinking this, the actual risk of uh, Iranian escalation may be, and that's a big maybe, may be less than people fear. I will leave it there. Anthony, thank you for your time. Anthony King, Professor of War Studies at the University of Exeter. Is this still an act of self-defence? Reactions follow the 7 6